The following program was produced or sponsored by a community member. The content, views, and opinions expressed are the sole responsibility of the producer and do not reflect those of Malden Access Television, the City of Malden, or Comcast. MATV welcomes your comments. Call us at 781-321-6400 or email us at excess at matv.org. Welcome all sports fans to another edition of the MMBL Action. I am your host, the Dutch, the Lester Dudley, along with Brad Weather Benton. Uh, he's always representing. What up, what up? And Andy Robinson representing the Lakers behind the camera. For most of the year. For most of the year, yeah. Taking over for Go Ref Go. Where is Go Ref Go? No one's heard from him. Even his roommate called me yesterday looking for him. Whoa, Go Ref Go. Not sounds good. Sound like a man who owes somebody money. It's just, amen to that. <laughs> First game, Sixers, a deep Pistons, three. and... Papagallo strokes it beyond the arc where everything is three. That means two plus one. And they tried to match, didn't work, and here comes Papagallo once again on the other end. Nice pass to LaFrosse. Who what? And he blows the bunny. There is, hey Brad, am I correct in saying that there is no Max Singleton? In the house, no Big Mac Singleton. You will not see Mac the rest of the season. No Big Mac Singleton. So he's on way to on to on way to Florida to the. the there, are good, there are good chances that the Sixers might use some of their timeouts. This is true. Mike McQuaddo has himself an assistant, Scotty Pippen, now help assisting on the Sixers here. <clears throat> Leo Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Papagallo trying too hard right there. He's got to relax. Nice and LaFosse makes that one right. What yes, he does. Coming into this game? We're doing that right now. Hey, Ryan D'Souza is going to take all three of these uncontested. Strokes Bangs it. it down. Strokes it. Ooh, we got a crackle in the system. The microphone for the commission is not working, but as long as eyes are, that's more important. There goes Timmy No. Put his head down and blew the bunny. Last week, Timmy No had five threes in one game. But did they win that game? They did not. That's a bummer. No soda is allowed beyond the threshold of the doorway. Therefore, we will drink it for you. Yes. It's allowed in the booth, but not on the camera. I felt it heavy. I just, you know. I know, I know Nesta likes first Timmy set. No. Oh, then it's not the pepper. You know, I'm a pepper. I'm a pepper. Be a peppy. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too, Andy? He would. <laughs> Half time, time, go out there and get yourself one, young lad. <laughs> Quench your thirst. Go buy us two more, by the way. Dancewitz couldn't get the perimeter shot to fall. <clears throat> and at halftime of this game, we will be debuting the first of hopefully many yes, hopefully. Um, models or designs of the L.O.T. T-shirts. We were talking about them for the past several seasons. Yes. Brad with Benton, who's always representing the controversial one. Yes, I am. Took the bulls by the horn, took the initiative, and went out and uh, pitched some, uh, pitched, purchased, purchased, purchase well, the, first line, the first line of what we hope to be many lines of different designs of L.O.T. T-shirts. Yes. Once again, on the first, on the front, on, on the front of the T-shirt, I'm thinking of three letters. And on the back, L.O.T. And L.O.T. usually stands for lack o intelligence, not lack o talent <laughs> or left on top. Lack o intelligence or losers on trial. It could happen. But then again, depends where you wear the shirt. And on the right lower side, the new style for all you hip hop masters. It says MNBO along the side, like the new style they're doing with the sports shirts. Representing, trying to keep it fresh. 
I, I was thinking, Brad, since the past two years I've been an important part of this cable cast booth, I should get a discount on these kind of shirts. Not a problem. Twelve dollars, it's all yours. I said a discount. A discount? I was going to charge you fifteen. <laughs> Not what you told me yesterday. I'll buy you a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> it all depends. If I have to order more, I can probably get a cheaper price, and then I'll give you a discount. Well, of course, the more you order, the uh, the cheaper the price is. But the thing I with don't. that, but the thing with that is that that usually means you have to put the money up front, which and I if, do. And if people don't come through, if they stiff you, then that ain't a good thing. No. So I if do. I was you, I would probably take orders, maybe even get the money up front. I'm thinking that and too. And then. At least initially, yeah. And then once the uh, popularity of these T-shirts go, or once, once you decide to change the designs or get different colors or what have you. How many did you print? A dozen. So far, I get an order for ten. So I might have to order more. Well, like six different people. Two Un people ordered two. Unfortunately, the season's ending in a matter of a couple of weeks. So it all has to be done within a week. Which I can get them done in one week. But there's always a but. Correct. If I ain't got the money, I can't burn it in my front. Man, that's the butt. If I'm paying $12, 12 times 12 is what? 144. Well, oh, Andy, I'm, shoot, I hear you. I can't say nothing bad about you right this second. Give me a minute. But yeah, that's, um, that's where we're at right now. Getting a dozen, that's a violation. Do proceeds, do, do any portion of the proceeds go to the NFL directly? Sorry, no. So you're going to be uh, Entrepreneur. It's all yourself. Oh, we saw the violation. You're the next Mark Cuban. There it is, you Oh, oh we missed it. We, we missed that. We were talking about the t-shirts. We missed the action. <laughs> <clears throat> there goes Timmy No trying to squeeze it in there. The Michael Steele didn't quite work. Oh, what did he pass that for? All right, maybe that's why. His butt cheeks got tight, and he saw Andrew saying, give me the rock. And he put it in. We got under three and a half to go, nine to six in favor of the sixes. The Pistons are looking to get the same record as the sixes. Pistons are two and ten. Sixes are three and nine. So a win here will give the Pistons a tied record. With the Sixes and the Kings. And you know Paul Conrad doesn't want that first pick in the draft. You know the Kings do? I mean, what? You know Paul Conrad doesn't want the first pick. Yeah, but the Kings coaching staff has already made an offer. If he ends up with it, he ain't getting it anyway. Who are they going to trade for? You never know. Come on, give us your dose of rumor, Bill. I can't. I can't. D'Souza hits the first. D'Souza had a nice weekend last week. Put up some big numbers. We're seeing nines on the board for both teams. Nine and nine, that's a pair. That's almost a good hit. There goes Leo, using his speed. And he hit the bunny. Oh, another steal He keeps on doing the same thing. Who is that? That's a nicer layup. That's Tom Redford. And yeah, Brad, if there was ever an example of going from bad to worse, it's about to happen with this change. Yep. <laughs> a three for Papagallo. No good. Tapped away by Leo to steal to Timmy. No! It's a beautiful lead pass. Nice hustle. Nice hustle by Rashawn Vaughn, who thinks he's Allen Iverson. Got that sleeve. Ain't helping nobody. That sleeve Maybe does nothing. Maybe he's keeping that arm warm. It is, a wee, it is a wee bit nippy in here. I guess. But I'm kept warm by my, uh, I'm thinking of three letters t-shirt. Yes, it is. It does look good on you. Thank you. I wore my uh, black and white checkered wave cap to match. Yep. As you normally do. You always seem to color coordinate. It's important. It is. Shows you have style. A lot of people out here don't have that much style. Fouls on the Pistons, number 54, 
And to boot, you don't droop your pants. No, I kind of, you know, I buy the size for a reason because it's my size, you know. Yes, I like wearing belts. I wear something purple every day in my life, which is usually my belt. There you go. You know. And matter of fact, Brad, I know you don't know this, but I am told by the women's that I got a damn good fine booty. So why am I going to droop my drawers exactly. and they can't look at my posterior? I got what you call a sphere. You do have a sphere. And, you know, you have the gams. I have the sphere. Okay. And, you know, they can't see the sphere if I'm drooping my drawers. No, they can't. They can see your drawers, but not no, the they sphere. Want them, not the sphere. Yes. There goes Tom Redford getting his. Nice pass to Lindbergh. <laughs> Good Lord, Ogerborg. Ogerborg. I don't but guarantee he'll, he'll try it again. He'll try to, yeah, absolutely. He'll try, he'll try it on the next trip up the floor. Probably. He won't pass. I will rephrase that statement because he'll try this on a hundred more times. And one of those, uh, one of those All right. hundred. Here. What do we got here? Lindbergh. Wait, he's not taking those three points. He averages 1.5 a game. Who? Okobur? Yes. And he just and got his three. I told you. I told you. And he thought he was going to hit it. And there goes D'Souza, who should have passed it back. A three on one, and he kept it. Someone get him a shirt. Have you ever seen Lindbergh or Emmanuel Mars go for their rebounds? Actually, I have. That was a good theft by Papagallo, but his uh, little piggy stepped on the baseline. Now look at Papagallo. He saw a three on one, and he passed it. Oh, blew the bunny. That's what D'Souza should have done last trip. Andrew there to pick up the garbage. Andy, I'm um, your private dancer, Weeks. Not in the house, he's Papa, like you stated earlier. Uncle Boy, oh, he's got he spring training for the Dodgers. And good Lord, there he goes. <laughs> Michael Park trying to get it up there. He got a little tied up. D'Souza was breaking, blows the bunny after begging for the ball. Steele fighting. Twisting. Like you Michael like Twisted Steel, I told you. Twisted Steel. He twisted around. They got 10 ticks to do something in this high scoring first quarter, Brad. Yeah, it is very high scoring. Trying to get it inside to dance with. Nice move. Cause a very nice maneuver. Don't think he knew how much time was left, but he did the right thing and he attacked the hoop. Cliff Hilaire has not come into the game. I was going to say that they scored Still 19 points aiding, in the first 10. Yes. Without Cliff Hilaire. Oh. Still aiding that bad ankle, I guess. So her, they're going to rest her, him. Her, her, hilarious. He's senior. senior. Huh, huh, huh. The notorious H I L. Yes. Rocking number one. Because he got one bad ankle. One good one. <laughs> and Paul Conrad. Bad ankle, too. And on the bench, I see one, two, three reserves for the Pistons. And I believe there's two for the Sixes. We got 10 minutes to go in the first half. Pistons up four. Paul Conrad did state, if I win today, do I still get first pick next year? Does he not realize the season isn't over yet? He still has to play another game. He has a makeup game against the Lakers. And he did state that, you know, after he beats the Lakers, do I still get first pick? Well, hopefully after today, the Lakers aren't going to have to worry about winning that game next week. So The Lakers don't have to worry about winning any game starting today. Well, we want that one spot. It's guaranteed. No, it's not. We can lose out and have a tiebreak with the Hawks. Ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen, but it could happen. Oh, nice deflected pass. Papagallo saw it and opened Adrian McKenzie. Adrian McKenzie, who only averages two points a game for the Sixers. You know, this Sixers team is a good team. I've said it all year. If they just learn to play as a team and distribute the ball. There goes you know, Leo. This team, could, this team would have more than three wins. Look at that. That's nice. If he doesn't Rashawn blow the money. There you go. You see? Went to his power side. Maybe that sleeve is what helped right there on that layup. Oh. Rodriguez has back in through this year for his first game. Yes, he has. He stopped shooting them threes. That was his problem. LaFosse went up. He had no intentions of passing that. Oh, what nice a pass. pass. McKenzie played three games for the Sixers. That's his first foul today, but he has seven on the year. Averages two a game. Not doing too good from the line. He was doing very well when he was a Sonic. 
Teal at the line. Let's see what he's got. Steal at the line is 42%. Averaging 9.2 a game. Not too shabby, first year sophomore. Hebert, I'm a brick house Batu, just showed up. Batu, if you, if you will. A little Creole like. Flavoring. Commissioner Mazonson learning Creole over the summer. Taking that class at Brandeis. Lindbergh. I guess you can vote him to be the next person who never saw a shot he didn't like. We've had a few people like that, and they were sixes. J.J. Batiste. He was a dribbling fool. Oh, yeah, that's two. And who was, there he goes again. I don't know who, <laughs> he tried to pass it to somebody, but it ended up in Papagallo's hands. Uh, look at him, he's fighting his own teammate. <laughs> Ed Brad, what does it say on your chest? It says, I'm thinking three letters. Hey, what does it say on the back? L-O-T. Yeah, that's what we just saw. <laughs> Lago intelligence. Lack of teamwork. Lack of talent. Lack of talking. Yeah. You've got to talk to your teammate. But it all boils down to what? Lack of intelligence. Mike McQuado's first game running the helm as an interim head coach could be the future head coach of the Sixes. But you never know in this league. He's yet to call a timeout. Yes, this is true. He's out there talking like he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I bet he hasn't taught him how to use the backboard, but he's telling him what to do on the court. Mike McQuaddo, famous for not using that backboard. For two years, he was in this league. 7.24 to go, tie score, 21-21. We've got to get back up top, got to see the court. There it goes. Nice spread for the Pistons right now. Hebert got the little throw going. Got to pick it out, my brother, pick it out. And there's Papagallo right up the middle again. LaFosse launching today. Oh, I need a shave. Just getting lazy. L.O.T. Lack of time. Exactly that, too. There goes Rashawn Vaughn's three attempt. Lindbergh with the, the save. Papa with the three. No good. D'Souza picks his head up way too late. Picked by Lindbergh. I would have given uh, Okobor technical, he spiked that ball. He didn't spike it too far away from his body, so that's what saved him. We got a bonus one and one with six minutes to go, 21 apiece. That's one of the things I don't like about the refs. They don't call these technical fouls fairly for everybody. If that were Jeremy Rocker, someone like me, Joe Armstrong, people like that, that would have been a T instant. Not necessarily true, depends on the referee and how much grief he has gotten since the tap of the game. They have not gotten any grief so far, so they're not, they're not agitated. He, he does it in the fourth quarter, it's possible he'll get a tee thrown at him. Steele throws it up to Timmy Noah, who's breaking. Good save, LaFosse going the other way with it. All of a sudden thinks he's a point guard. Oh, he's breaking ankles. And he's shooting. Why he shot, he don't even know. But Andrew's there to clean it up once again. Leo, that's almost a carry. D'Souza going to take all. Oh, oh nice, nice inside look. Couldn't handle it. it Steele has some hands. That would have been an easy two. Yep. Fading away, never a good shot. Oh, wide open. Dan Suisse turn. is just picking up a lot of rebounds. How many points does he have off rebounds? He's got at least eight. 
Timmy knows he's got a pass in the middle. There's people wide open. He's only a lefty. He can't go right. He should just pass it right. Get the ball back on the left. The six are going man. Set the pick. Nice move, Leo. If he had more handle, he would have taken care of that. No good on that. Stays piston ball. Four minutes to go. Six is up four. Wide open. Pistons just ain't hitting their shots the last couple minutes. Okobor, he's going. Yeah! Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> and look at, look at Gibby. Look at Paul Conrad. He's about to lose control. <laughs> Mike McQuaddo saw what Paul Conrad threw. I think he's going to throw it at Paul. Oh. Notice Paul was limping. Paul Carver couldn't even take that walk down the hallway. Nope. Not if he wanted to. Uh, someone get him a wheelchair. Better yet, someone <laughs> give him a bucket. The bomb bucket. Oh, yeah, the bucket. <laughs> LaFosse gets the shooter's roll. A little luck on his side. And the answer would be no. Same the question I'm thinking is, whose man is that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Does that man have a man? And they're just settling for three-pointers. Pistons think they need to shoot threes. Late whistle. Pistons foul number one, Cliff Clare, his second personal, third of the team. Almost stolen by Steele. Oh, he must have hit it back off the sixes. Set picks, they're calling it out. Pistons down, and he steals it. Oh, 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 he's going to blow this bad. No, what I tell you, it's a given. LaFosse <laughs> cleans it up. <laughs> what I tell you. I knew he'd, I think everybody knew he'd miss that. He makes the two tough ones, but he can't make the easy ones. Oh. Timmy No on that oh, left side. Oh, he should have shot that. Oh, Leo Rodriguez threw to nobody. Cliff Hilaire, personally, I don't think he should be on the court. He can't jump. He can't cut left to right. He can only run straight ahead. But he's got a lot of hot. The Sixers are just on a run right now. Sixers are on a run. They're up eight right now with 2.17 to go in the first half. Houston's got to stop settling for the three. Conrad is not happy with this. Paul Conrad, he's an angry man, and he has crutches. Somebody better watch out and play some defense. He's a little upset right now. If I were the Pistons, I'd stop settling for threes, trying to get it down low, do what they did in the first quarter, and that was passing the ball down low. Let's hope Paul Conrad doesn't lose control. No. He might throw a crutch yeah. a la Bob Knight, That's like a you, chair. You took my word, man. I don't care. You're not quick enough. You're still a rookie in the, behind the booth there. I was trying to get you guys' attention, but you know. When you stop learning to say you guyses, guys. then we'll start letting you use vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> we use vocab words here in the booth. How about them? Oh, he waited too long to pass at Lindbergh. Fell down for no reason, but Rasan Vaughn just decided to throw it behind him. Lindbergh pulled a Joe Armstrong. Hey, yeah, you could say that. Andy Robinson can say that, because Joe has been known to attack people. Hey, I got free, this is free speech TV. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. They missed that. Looking for the foul, ain't getting it. We got a minute and a half to go, Nesta. Papagallo misses. Oh. 
Oh, it's a two on none. Deal. He should have just gave it up. He ain't fleet o feet. Nope. They're taking out LaFosse and putting in Tom Redford. Hey, he's putting him in for LaFosse. Yes. Oh, well, LaFosse has a pair and a half. Yeah, we got time, Rook. We got, yeah, we got time. You don't know the leap. I, last year I was a rookie on this. You're still a rookie. Okay, I'm a two-year rookie. Yes, That's you are. Like, In this league, it's two-year rookie. Okay, so next year I'll be a, I'll be a veteran. Next, next year you'll be a freshman year. in college. That's you'll right. Be, you'll be in Pennsylvania. I'm not going to Pennsylvania. Okay. No? West Virginia? That state won't take you back? <laughs> <laughs> D'Souza gets blocked by Dancewitz. Says this is mi casa, no su casa. D'Souza coming in. See Steele, better not blow the bunny on that one. Pistons should pressure the ball right now. They got nothing to lose. Half's about to end. They're down six minutes to go in the first half. Gotta get in position. Oh, he didn't take it. There he goes, a deep three with an air ball for the end. Didn't hit a damn thing. Not a damn thing, nope. Timeout? Timeout? Did Mike McCloud just call a timeout? Mike McCloud of the he has, he has 52 ticks exactly to get in two more timeouts. Yes. To use all three of them. Six is timeout? Yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was probably like about the third time. Yeah, the third at most. Because <laughs> 52 ticks, 31, 25, sixes. Everybody's in the huddle except for Kenny LaFosse because he just got taken out, so he's upset. Oh, he has a pair and a half. Yes. Well, this thing two more means bye bye. Adrian McKenzie on the bench. Six is going small. Can you say small and gullible? Haven't said that in a few years. Many a moons. Steel. Paul Conrad just yelled, set it back up, and Steel shot it. Did he think he meant put it back up? D'Souza not looking. And then he looks at the wrong time. 30 seconds left. Plenty of time to get a good shot off. As soon as Kenny LaFosse gets out of the camera view, we'll be all right. Should be on his bench with his team. Dancewitz with a deep shot. I'm saying he's got at least 12, yes. Plenty of time, seven seconds. Timmy Nogut, wide open Leo, head down again. He doesn't pick that head up. What are his numbers at the line? Lindbergh? Oh, Timmy. Timmy Timmy's very good at the line, actually. Timmy No is 58%. Before last weekend, he was at like 72, but he missed like six out of 10 shots last weekend. But he was, he was unstoppable. Hits that one, two seconds down, six. Oh! The end of the first half, 33-27 are the Sixers over the Pistons. Pistons going into that run. The Pistons opened up the game when they put on that full court press. They were able to increase their lead. They came from a two to four point deficit and was able to increase the lead. Yeah, the Pistons were running pretty good in the first quarter. They had a nice lead going. They, they blew it by relying on their threes. They got to give up the threes. They don't need to shoot that. They were doing well. They were contented. They were up, like you said, a few points. Then all of a sudden it was tied, and the, the Sixers came back. Jansowitz just picking up all the balls that keep falling down by the rim. No Pistons are picking them up. He's putting them in. He's got at least 12 to 14. And if the, the Pistons don't stop him from getting down low and getting those offensive rebounds, 
it's going to be another loss for the Pistons. And my fellow Maldonians, we were talking about it for the past several seasons. They are out the first and hopefully a long design of T-shirts. On the front, it says, I'm thinking of three letters. And on the back, it says L-O-T right there, no, no, no. which stands for Lack of Intelligence. Lack of intelligence. And then for the hip hoppers, the hip hoppers over here, because he's got to show the sphere, so he'll have sideways. We have the MNBL insignia to make it official in this league, Mom Neighborhood Basketball League's own shirts. So if we all want some, come on down. If you want yourself a shirt, you want a Lack of Intelligence shirt, you want to buy it for your son because he doesn't want to do his chores, pick up after himself, or he's just not that bright in school, give him a shirt, maybe he'll think twice and he'll get it done for you. And, thank, and you know, and your daughter, if you have a daughter that goes to school That's and true. gets thrown out of classes like the library, you might want to purchase a t-shirt yes. for her too. L-O-T, I'm thinking of three letters. Or if she gets sent home from school, you put the shirt on yourself, you don't even have to yell at your child anymore. You point at it, then you give her the thumb in the back, <laughs> she'll know what it means. And there are some of you guys out there that have no business reproducing anyway. You might want to buy a t-shirt for yourself. for yourself. And hang an extra one on the wall. <laughs> we'll see you set the half. Back at the half. 33-27, Sixers over the Pistons. I wonder where Brad's at so I can continue eating my chocolate chip cookies. Here he comes. Here I is, talking business, people are looking for the shirts. Hot item right now. Got my list started. And you and Beatty were just lecturing me two seconds ago about vocabulary. And you come and say, here I is. That's legal in the booth. If you say so. Speaking of here it is, look at that hat on Howard Jones showing up. No one told him that the game was at 115. Oh, wait, they did. But he done forgot. Oh, that's why they make the schedule and um, give coaches free copies of them, Brad. Yes. Still with a good fake, but a bad shot. One minute gone, quick foul. That's only his second. How many points did um, Andy, I'm um, your private dance, so he's getting the first half? Oh, I forgot to count, but I think it said 12. I thought, I thought you went over there to count. Yeah, you went over well, there. What were you doing? tabulating yesterday's too. Oh, okay. But I think it said 12. He just went hard. Yep, two more for him. <laughs> didn't yesterday. Timmy No ducking that head. He'll never get one to fall. Kevin Leonard, there you go. I'm calling him Tom Redford. What am I doing that for? It's Kevin Leonard. I apologize. Is it Redford Leonard on the family. Sonics? Yes. I don't know why I was saying that. I'm thinking of three letters. I am too. I didn't want to correct you, though, because you're the veteran on the rookie. Yes, so you should zip it. He can, he can correct. But you should have said something when we were off the air. Good move. Short-armed it. Didn't extend. Pistons coming the other way. The Pistons cannot afford to run with the sixes. They got Papagallo flying up the court all the time. The Pistons have to play control and don't put up shots like that. Twice. <laughs> Nestor, when are we taking Three times. Team photos? Huh? When Does team anyone photos shoot with two hands? Taken? Next weekend. Next weekend? Look at the control 13 has. A steal by Leo. He's got like four of them. But what's he going to do here? And he blows the bunny. Timmy No blows the bunny. He got scarred. The Pistons have to settle. They got to get control, bring it inside, and pass the ball. Don't put your head down looking at the floor dribbling, Timmy. Pass the rock. Michael Steele bails him out. He's averaging nine a game. Cliff Hilaire, who's down with the bad ankle, their leading scorer. Dance Weeks. Dance Weeks, a good putback. He's going to have no problem re the rest of the day rebounding 
If Michael Park is playing the center position, Park trying to get his. He's got to realize the rim's about four feet to the left. And he would have had it. Joe Armstrong ignoring the fact that his mama is in the doorway looking for him. She might, she might come to punish him. He said, Ma, I told you never to come here. I want to show off now. Adrian McKenzie finally coming back into the game. He's got to learn his position and get down low. Lindbergh comes out. First year sophomore, Lindbergh. First year sophomore, Adrian McKenzie. Much different sizes of the two. Joe Armstrong's leaving to go clean his room and take out the trash. Got to do his chores. His mama showed up. He must have done something wrong. Either that or he stole the car keys. A three, Rashawn Bond. Rashawn, I think I'm Iverson Vaughn. They're down 10. Now, how interesting would it be if the Pistons do win today and the three bottom teams have the same identical record? I don't even know what the standings are, Brad. Let me see what you got for the standings. I didn't do my um, official unofficial stats last week, so there you go. I'm behind here. So if the Pistons win... That would be those. Penny. I don't know who's watched it before. If the Pistons win, both teams would be three and ten. Probably Lisa. So today is a big, very huge game for the Sonics. Yes. Yes. Sonics got to keep pace. Paul Carver has a hobbling. He said you can see the same thing every time from there. Top three teams: the Lakers, the Hawks, and the Bulls clinch playoff spot. Fourth is still up for grabs because the sixth, the Celtics are six and six, and the Sonics are five and six. So today's game, Sonics against the Lakers, is huge for the Sonics. Yes. Not necessarily true because they have another game. And they've already clinched. More important for the Sonics. Man, he gave up 72 points Mm hmm. <laughs> but the Lakers want to rest That's easy next Sunday. Had, uh, and not Again, have let it go. The Sonics game is more important. Lindbergh to, to Vaughn. Back to Papagallo. That was actually a smart pass. You know, this Sixers team is playing the way I've known this team could play all along. All they got to do is give up the rock. The Still. only thing that the Sixers team is not doing that I would like to see them do, i like to see them... Look for, look for Dan Sweets down low. They don't look for Dan Sweets down low. They don't. No, they don't. They just rely on him to get all their rebounds. And that's what he gets all his points off, off the offensive glass. Pretty much. Steele got to use that backboard. Over the back. Leo getting up in the grill of the ref. A lot of sophomores on the floor. Adrian McKenzie went in and came out. What's the deal? Maybe he's in foul trouble. He ain't got a foul on him. Second biggest on the court. No, one foul. Oh, a pick by, speaking of pick. He ain't gonna blow the bunny too often. Down 13, not good. Again, we what is did. Rodriguez doing? He don't know. Nice put back by Michael Park. <laughs> Kevin Leonard, open. Oh, a steal by Timmy No. He saw that coming a ways away. Settles for that, no good. Come up with a good steal. You don't want to give it right back. He makes it right, but he though. He makes it right. He did. 
needed that. Two minutes to go in the third. They're down nine. They gotta stop the sixes. Almost wow, a and there goes Timino. He's why is he stopping the dribble? He has the height advantage. To any of you kiddies out there watching, if you have the height advantage on a kid that is defending you one on one, you take him to the rim. You don't settle for a two foot, three foot, eight foot jumper. You gotta back him down and take him. Especially a southpaw. You cannot settle for that, especially when you're trailing. You got height, you use the height to your advantage. You got speed, you use your speed to advantage. Power, you power him down. Chris Rogers told me that. And if you got L.O.T., you should be on the bench with your coach. Two words were never spoken. Now, during this brief timeout, I'm going to take a brief timeout, and I'm going to partake it for a sip of this Gatorade beverage. X Factor, today's flavor, orange and tropical fruit. That is today's flavor. So if you're out there and you're heading to Stop and Shop, go purchase a case, and if you'd like, come on by and drop some off for Nesta Dudley. As you hear the sippage of the liquid. No more Sam Bitters, Brad. I couldn't take that. Yeah, that, that was rough. Yeah, I was. Oh. I thought that little girl was waving at me. I was going to say, don't you know I'm old? Me, your older brother? Yeah, but you got Hebert Patoli next to you. Well, she was waving at Hebert. Oh, of course. Who, which Looking at which woman doesn't? Looking like Hebert, like he was a piece of chicken. Oh, she wanted to sop him up like a biscuit. Lindbergh with that shot that he does, only that he can do. A nice pass. Steele settled for a lousy shot. Plenty of time. Why did he rush it? Ania Steele. Steele not looking again. Now when you're back, Adeline. Follow Ogleberg, that's his third, it's a pay and a half. Oh, Michael, if you didn't know, next Saturday we're all leaving after the second game to go out to Chinese. All the coaches. It's like, no, next Saturday, not the following Saturday. Is that the end of that? Yeah. If you're interested, if not, don't have to go. Pap Papagallo all the way. It's a good time. There's usually about 12, 15 of us. We talk just about all the kids. It's a good time. We'll go over here. Lisa and Paul go. Leo Rodriguez pulled that one out. Got the horseshoe tattoo on his back. Temporary. Rashawn Vaughn, who's got a three earlier. Over to Kevin Leonard, who got his shot off. <laughs> Paul Conrad's heel all of a sudden got better. There goes Leo. Timmy No with a nice pick. Leo's got to pick his head up and not settle for a shot like that when he's got four other players. Steele got to put the bunnies in. How are they missing Look all these Paul, I'm Paul Armstrong. Paul Conrad hobbling. I'd say, I mean, uh, you got to eat up on the Gatorade. No, Joe Armstrong's in my way, so I just said Paul Armstrong. I don't know if he wants to change his name. Timmy No got to put that in. He's got to get stronger on those rebounds. What's with the double pump? Straight up, son. The Pistons have missed five straight layups. It does. Surprise me when any team misses five straight layups. You gotta hit one out of three. But if you're a piston, I guess not. 30.5 ticks to go, 45-38. Timmy No usually reliable at the line. Cliff Hillier is just having a tough weekend. Bad ankle, he's not gonna be able to Six is called a timeout! That's the second one. Second one today. First this half. I think he'll do one more. 
But Brad, why is he always calling these timeouts within 30 ticks? Well, actually Try within a minute, because the first one was 52 ticks. Something like that, yeah. So he waits till the last minute, but you know what? At least he's using them. He is. He figured, why not? Steve Wright does it, why can't I? He's What he's doing right now, I can overhear him because he's a loud mouth. He's talking about calming him down, don't want no stupid fouls to end the quarter, go into the fourth quarter strong, and, you know, out of foul trouble. Max Dunphy. Oh, yeah. Should have been going two weeks ago, but George is not late. One, two, three, defense. He left at 5 a.m. Yep. today. Yeah, they, uh, Mac has to go and report. He has to uh, be tested for steroids. He does? Mac, oh, yeah, they got to look at Mac. Even coaches? He's testing for steroids. Oh. No. Uh, hold on, no. Kevin Leonard playing strong today. Twenty-three. And there's a reach in. Phil Mutebi with his first personal of the day for the Pistons. Nobody's moving. Oh, that's a clean steal. They're calling the foul on Hilaire who got in front of the defense, the offensive player. That was a clean steal right in front of us. And the camera proved it. Oh. There was on camera. And that was a foul. They just drawn all these fouls in the last 30 seconds. That's two on Leo. He's all right. It's 14-5 to go in the quarter. A shot by Lindbergh Ogabor. Plenty of time to get a shot off. The pick set for the three. He had a nice look at it. And that's the quarter. That's it. 47 to 38 in favor of the Sixers. The Pistons got to do a lot of work in the final quarter. And it all starts with defense. If they could just play that defense. Yeah, they do. They got to attack the ball, continue what they did. And they can come back. They cut the lead down. They were started to fall apart. Now they got it down to nine. Next game is a big game for the Celtics. It's Hawks Celtics. Hawks nine and three, yeah, Celtics no. six and six. Big red? Big red. I usually don't chew gum, but I think today I'm gonna need it. I had some munchkins earlier and that's all I'm tasting. We have 10 minutes to go. The Pistons, if they get a loss, will pretty much lock up the first pick for next year. If they come back, they can make it very interesting. Three teams would be tied for fifth place, even though it all equals all the way down to last, or well, sixth place. But it would be a three-way tie with another weekend to go. Steal with the steal. Oh, he, he settled for that and he, oh, he got lucky. Should have pulled that back out. He had numbers against him. Sixers almost threw it away. If Cliff Hillier had a good wheel, he would have took that. Trying to get it back. Phil Mutebi with the steal to, to Hillier, who can only go straight ahead. He's got to watch that ankle. Cliff Alea playing with some intestinal fortitude on that bad leg. So Brad, last night after we had our festivities at the Glossy Girls party, yes. I went home. I think one of them likes me. I went. Whoa, which one? I think it's Katie. Could be. Could be. It's probably Mama Glossy, but she's always liked me. Not in that way. <laughs> um. 
Went home. I have HBO. I have On Demand, obviously. Oh, don't and tell I me saw, you did it. I saw two episodes of Oz. Excellent. Good show. Never even heard of it until last night. Yes. Beautiful. Did, you, did like you like it? it? Yeah. It's interesting, yeah. huh? Yeah, it is. It is. Papagallo with the near steel. When I watched On Demand, and it's a true story, I'm not BSing. Okay. When I watch On Demand, I usually watch like the History Channel historical stuff yep. or A and E history or Discovery history. I know history. you do. That's your you know, the last, fellow. Matter of fact, the last one that I watched was uh, Abe Lincoln. They had a 90-minute thing on, on Abe Lincoln. Really? Talk, yeah. Talk about the, still still on from you know from from birth to death, went into the real thing about the Civil War, Emancipation Proclamation, yada yada yada. Went through all that. 90 minutes of informational stuff that they do not teach you in the public school system. So when I watch on demand, I usually watch stuff like that. I like stuff like that. I like watching. World That's good to know, case I have a question about Abe Lincoln. I like watching World War II stuff. Speaking of I like how it was in black and white and all that stuff. And you know, even though that was a terrible, we're terrible talking war. Abe Lincoln, Andy. Good. Wait for him to finish his dissertation, then you may get in. That's a vocab word. Yeah. I like watching things like that. A and dissertation? Yes. And they don't even watch. I go to HBO. I think it's the HBO Sports. And sometimes they'll have like the um, the story behind the story of like certain uh, yeah, boxing, I like those. boxing I watch those. matchups. Good job. Oz, watch the wire. The wire. I would love to see Nip Tuck on demand. I would love to see <laughs> some more Nip Tuck. Yeah. Well, it's coming. It's coming soon. I don't know. It's like the best show ever going. Yes. Yeah. Unless we want to double X, because I already ordered more. Now we're back. I'll sell this one to Andy. Come to him, $10. I can give you 10 Come on, guys. Get on. Ryan D'Souza, the Pistons got to start attacking a little better. They started to come back, and now they're just letting it ride again. No defense. Paul Conrad screaming the same thing. Again with that shot. It hasn't fallen all day, and he continues all season, doing it. Brad. He c continues to shoot it. Best thing about his game this year, he's quick. Oh, I, I put it down when I went to grab the shirt. Here he comes. You want one? Get over there. Thank you. Oh, travel. travel. We got a foul. That's only one on steel. We got 520 to go in the game. 11.6 a lead. They're starting to walk away again. Still with a nice move. That's what the Pistons did in the first quarter. To give them a lead. They need to keep doing that. Could be, he was 63. He, did, he never drank or smoked or anything like that. Maybe that was it. Timmy No. Timmy No has no idea how to up fake. Get that thing out of here. You must protect the house. Teddy, where are you? Should have been in the middle. Six is five, number three, Adrian McKenzie, his fourth person. Mike McQuaddle's first day at the helm sounds like he's been there a while. He hasn't grabbed the bucket yet, so he hasn't had paid his dues. He might now with Lindbergh coming back in. Why is he taking Adrian out again? Huh? Elbows code, that's all a little chilly in here. Yeah, that's gotta be it. He's the new AI. The six is pretty much in control. 
LaFosse again will shoot. That was an obvious shot. Timmy No got to pick the head up. He's by himself. He's got to look around. There you go. Now they settle. Now they got to look up. Find the open man. Don't settle for a three. They just gave the ball right back on a LOT shot. Paul Carver just screamed it. Don't need threes. Nice hustle by Timmy No on the defense. Good job. Denied him the shot. Three, 324 stop time to go. Dancewitz hits the first. You said it right, Paul. It's killing you shooting threes. Dancewitz hits them both. 52%. Not bad for the big man. Get out on that, get out on that, get out on that. Hilaire, got to watch himself, he's being double teamed. Nice look. Waited for someone to cut, very patient, good job. That's two pair on him. Two pair on the Berg. Mike's going to leave him in there so he can foul out. I would. You got to hit him. They need every point they can get. Stop time now. Take advantage of every opportunity. They can come back. Plenty of time. Take it and hit the jackpot. And hits them both. Seven point game. Gotta stop them. Have oh. to stop them here. Critical, three minutes left. Ooh, that was a travel. Oh, he saved himself. Kicked it out of bounds. Really? He's blaming his team and he kicked the ball out himself. And traveled the court anyway. Yes, but he's blaming his team. Oh, three. so you're gonna keep the man. What do you let me do in kicking it out on my own, my own leg? Oh, okay. Three letters. Uh-huh. Yeah. Steele trying to fight to get in there. He's got to be a little more patient. Nice attempt. Kicked out by Papagallo. D'Souza just throws it up. He wasn't even squared up to the hoop. And there's the ball. Cliff Hill got to get it. Nice attempt. On a bad ankle. Pistons have the opportunities. They're just blowing the bunnies. Settling for off-balance shots, one-handed hook shots. They haven't fallen all game, and they keep doing it. Ooh, nice defense right there. Looking for a foul. Wow. I even thought the Pistons blocked it and hit it out of bounds. Oh, bad shot. Again, why are they trying to force it up? That was a foul. Two pair and LaFosse. We got 2.07 to go. Cliff at the line, hit his last two in a row. And he's choking. But cheeks that tight. Two minute warning. There you go. Brings it to an even game at six. Oh, almost knocked it out of bounds. Pistons have to capitalize. They got to get up there and settle for a good shot, not settle for an off balance. D'Souza's got to look. Oh, he didn't even look at the hoop. Good rebound by Steele. Just threw it up, didn't get balance. Nice pass. Good pass. LaFosse got his arm up like he did something. He hit a shot he was supposed to hit. D'Souza's got to pick his head up. Thank you. Good job, Timmy No getting stripped. There you go. Wide open LaFosse again. 
That pretty much ices the game. Double digit lead. The Pistons had all the opportunities in the world and they did stuff like that the fourth quarter that just had to fall apart. There's gonna, oh, he passed it. Ooh. Well, Fossey will shoot again. Six straight points for the Fossey. And now you just throw this down. Yeah, now he's just now being too cocky. Dancewitz with the ball. Papagallo, who had an off game today, and the Sixes still came out with a victory. I don't know how many points Papagallo had. It couldn't have been over 10. Dancewitz and LaFosse, I think, led the team easily in scoring. LaFosse scored the last six. That's what made him get up to the top. Yeah. What? So the mic don't work. It doesn't sound like it. What, you supposed to hear it? That's the microphone for the, for the, for the bed. This is for the TV. L-O-T. L-O-T. Read the shirt. Lack of time on this earth. <laughs> He'll learn. No foul. Cliff Allaire throwing it up. Still off balance again. Because he's a Hun. Don't pass it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out. Take it out. You can win. I pick him. And Mike McQuano just told his team not to give the ball to Caitlin Moss. <laughs> yeah, That's funny. I would. <laughs> Empty in the bench. Pistons confused still. 18 seconds to go in the game. Figured they'd get it right by now. 61-48, Papagallo at the line. Not as good a free throw shooter as he was last year, but he still scores a heap of points. They're letting him shoot. LaFosse trying to block it after coach says let it go. Nine point nine to go. It's a jump ball. Steel versus LaFosse. Leo Rodriguez throws it up and off the glass. He was squared up to the hoop and he hit it. Better than those one-handed hook shots he's been putting up. Sixty-two to fifty. The Sixers one dozen better than the Pistons. One dozen. The Pistons just fell apart in the fourth, settling for off-balance shots, settling for one-handed drives six feet away from the rim. It's just not going to work. It didn't work all game, and they continued to do it the entire game. Long day for the Pistons. They had all the opportunities in the world to win this game, and they just could not do it. They had a lead. They lost the lead. They came back and retied it. Then they let the Sixers just dominate once again, and they didn't play their, to their potential. I've said all year, this team, Pistons never quit, never gave up. To me, it looked like they finally gave up. Anything to add, Andy? I, everything you guys said was covered. Did he just say he's going to buy some Dr. Pepper? That's what I heard. That's what I heard. And with that, for Andy Robinson, Brett with Bentley, Bentley. Benton, who's always represented. Better than Bretton from NWA New England. And this is Deadly saying we'll see in use at the games.